Hi everyone, welcome to Lecture 11D of Useful Genetics. Here we're going to introduce the topic of epigenetics and we'll define it as a heritable mechanisms of gene regulation that don't involve changing DNA sequence. We'll talk about where it's useful and we'll talk about the most common mechanism of epigenetic regulation, methyl methylation of cytosine bases in DNA. So epigenetics is mechanisms of gene regulation that can be stably inherited through mitosis and sometimes through meiosis as well. But they, they can be established and released without changing the DNA sequence. So normally when we think of um, changes that are stably inherited through cell generations, we think of mutations, changes in DNA sequence. That's not the case with epigenetics. Now, there's another definition. I looked in Wikipedia, of course, and Wikipedia's definition is simply study of changes in gene expression or cellular phenotype caused by mechanisms other than changes in the underlying DNA sequence. And I don't like this definition because it's so broad that it includes all forms of gene regulation, whereas epigenetics particularly refers to mechanisms of regulation that are heritable from one cell generation to another. We need stable, heritable forms of gene regulation because many of our cells need to acquire differentiated phenotypes that are going to remain stable over multiple generations. Some of the Kinds, the kinds of regulation that we've been thinking about so far with um, repressors binding or activators binding to promoters of DNA are fluid responses that can change within the lifetime of cell. But now we're thinking about regulation that persists for longer than a cell life's lifetime and that once it's established, it's fairly stable to changing conditions and it's only undone under special circumstances. Examples of cells that need regulation that can be stably inherited are specialized progenitor cells such as, such as stem cells. These cells need to continue dividing and producing new stem cells that will then go on to different differentiated functions with different sets of genes eventually turned off. Differentiated cells may also need to continue growing and dividing, producing more cells with the same properties as themselves. And in these cells also, they need their gene regulation to be stably established so that it's inherited by their daughter cells. An extreme example of epigenetic regulation is X inactivation, where a whole chromosome is stably turned off and it must through all of the cell divisions, through the whole life of the organism, it needs to stay off. Mechanisms of epigenetic regulation can sometimes be the same processes used for other kinds of gene regulation, but more commonly, they're modifications that change how the DNA is packaged into the compact structures called chromatin. Um, You'll know, I think, that DNA is very long filaments and that typically in the cell it's wrapped around particular proteins called histones. And then in genes that are to be actively expressed, the DNA remains in this relatively open first level of packaging state. It's called active chromatin or euchromatin. However, if DNA is going, contains genes that are going to be inactive, it usually goes through additional levels of compaction so that it takes up less space in the cell. It's tucked neatly away. And heritable mechanisms of um, gene regulation often work by causing particular DNA sequences to be packaged into heterochromatin where they won't be expressed. And this is usually done in one of two ways. The first is modification of the chromatin proteins. So for example, the chromatin that's bound to a particular sequence may be modified in some way, like phosphorylated or acetylated, in a way that causes it to form a compact structure where the genes are not readily expressed. The mechanism that I'm going to talk about is the alternative one, 
methylation of the DNA, where the modifications are instead directly on the DNA, and they serve as signals to package the DNA in compact heterochromatin where it won't be expressed. Mechanisms of epigenetic regulation are particularly interesting because of how they manage to be inherited from one cell generation to another. And methylation provides a particularly nice example of this. So when DNA is methylated, it's typically methylated at cytosine bases. These are the Cs. And the modification is to put a methyl group onto one position of the C base. It's on the 5 position, so it's called 5-methylcytosine. We'll just represent this methylation by a red star. Now, typically, this methylation isn't done at just any C base in the DNA. So, for instance, you could imagine it could be done at that C and at that C and at that C, but it isn't. Instead, the, D the methylation is only done at positions where there are a C and a G side by side. So it's done here at this C that's next to a G is methylated. C is in front of 5 prime of the G. It's also done here where the DNA, the C is also 5 prime of a G, but going in the opposite direction. You can see these CG pairs form a kind of palindrome that reads the same way in both directions. Here's the same sequence flipped around, and you can see that although the rest of the sequence is different when we look at it in the other direction, the CG pair is the same. So typically, when cytosines are methylated in DNA as a signal for epigenetic regulation, or for turning a gene off, it's the C's in both strands of a CG triplet, CG dimer. Now, this has the excellent property of being easy to replicate when the DNA replicates, so that the daughter DNA molecules inherit the same methylation pattern that the parent molecule had. So here's a DNA replication for it. We see here a cluster of methylated CG pairs. They usually do occur in clusters, and the C in the, on each strand of the CG is methylated, as, just as I've shown here. And then there's a replication for it. When the new DNA is synthesized, shown by the blue strands, it's not methylated. But cells contain what's called a maintenance methylase, an enzyme whose job is to seek out sites such as this, where the C's in one strand are methylated, but the C's in the other strand aren't methylated, and to add methyl groups only at those sites. So the enzyme goes in here, and it adds methyl groups on the other strand. So that would be equivalent to here, adding a methyl group there. This has the effect of taking what was one molecule of both strands methylated, and then after DNA replication, two molecules, each with only one strand methylated, after the action of the maintenance methylase, we have two DNA molecules with both strands methylated. Here, just as in the parent molecule. So the methylation pattern has been stably inherited by the new DNA molecules. Now, this, doesn't, this explains how once methylation patterns have been set, they can be inherited from one cell generation to the next. But for this to be a useful process of regulation, there needs to be a way to start it, to put methyl groups that weren't where there weren't any, and there needs to be a mechanism to remove the methyl group so the gene can be expressed again when it's needed. And both of these are easily established with C CG methylation. First, to establish new methylation, 
the cell has um, what's called a de novo methylase. This is distinct from the maintenance methylase in the previous slide, which only put methyls at positions where one strand already had them. The de novo, de novo means starting out new, the de novo methylase goes to sites in the chromosome where there are CGs, where it's desirable that the gene should now become stably turned off, and it adds methyl groups to both strands at the methylase, at the CG pairs. Again, this is usually at clustered CG sites along the chromosome. Here you see a cluster, another cluster, another cluster. So this is the de novo methylase, and it acts only at CG duplexes. Methylation is also fairly easily removed because it's lost whenever the DNA is replicated. So any time a cell lineage needs to lose its methylation, it's sufficient just to turn off the maintenance methylase, and all of the methylation will be lost in the new DNA. So what we've done, we've considered what epigenetic effects are, stable mechanisms of gene regulation that are heritable but don't involve changing the DNA sequence. We've talked about the best understood one, the DNA methylation of cytosine bases at CG sites. This methylation happens on both DNA strands, and that makes it heritable through DNA replication because of the action of a maintenance methylase that adds methyls to the new unmethylated strand, but only where the old strand had a methyl group. But methylations can be removed by simply turning off this methylase, or they can be created de novo by a special method, methylase that serves to initiate the regulation process by methylating at sites that weren't methylated before. Coming up next, we're going to talk about a special kind of epigenetic regulation that's particularly interesting and important for humans, and that's imprinting. I hope to see you there.